welcome back, everyone. I want you to take a look at your screen right now. This is sunrise over Gaza City. Uh, just two and a half hours from now, the official ceasefire that's been agreed to by Israel and Hamas will begin. But at the moment there, it looks tranquil and peaceful. And we will see if that can continue for the next two and a half hours and beyond. We will keep you posted as to what's happening on the ground. But after 27 days of defending itself, has Israel somehow lost more in the eyes of the world than Hamas has? Here to debate that is Ben Shapiro. He's the editor-in-chief of TruthRevolt.org and Rula Jabrial, a foreign policy analyst and author of the novel, Miral. Thanks to both of you for being here. Ben, I want to start with you. Is it your impression that in the court of public opinion that Israel has somehow taken more of a hit during these 27 days than Hamas has? There's no question. I mean, Hamas is a terrorist group, and people going in understood Hamas to be a terrorist group. Israel, thanks to outlets like CNN, has been turned into the villain in this particular scenario, and a moral equivalency has been drawn between the two groups. If Hamas could have come up with any sort of outlet that could have created a, a will to kill more Jewish babies and Palestinian babies, uh, CNN would have been it. I mean, CNN is, 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 a, is a key factor in drawing the same sort of equivalency that Hamas hopes ben, to win. Ben, hold on a second. I just want to stop you right there. because sure. You're saying that because CNN has interviewed Palestinian families and shown Palestinian children who have been wounded or killed, that somehow CNN is saying that Hamas is okay? I don't think that those two are equivalent. We're not allowed to CNN's show the civilians caught strong, in the yeah. crossfire? Of course you're allowed to show civilians caught in the crossfire. You should also mention all the restrictions that Hamas puts on your reporting inside the Gaza Strip. You should also mention all the context. With regard to Hamas putting children in harm's way, you should also routinely mention the fact that Hamas's charter calls for the destruction not only of the state of Israel, but for the murder of Jews across the world, which, of course, CNN does not. Uh, that, that's silly, Ben. We talk about that all the time. We talk about the charter, the Hamas charter that says that they want to obliterate Israel and wipe Israel off the face of the map. That's, you're just not being fair. That's not true. Our reporters uh, no, you on you the mention ground it occasionally say that. In the, you mention it occasionally in the midst of vast swaths of imagery about Israel using what you would term excessive force. Uh, Rula? Your, what's your impression uh, <laughs> of what's going on well, these past 27 days? I, I think Ben is not in, in a position to really lecture us about extremism, especially after what he said about President Obama when he called him a Jew hater, when he called him anti Semitic, and when he called for the expulsion of Arabs in the West Bank and Gaza. And, and Arab Israel is like myself as a, as a solution. You know, it's so hard to listen to somebody that even Jeffrey Goldberg called a fascist. Saying that, I think the issue about the public opinion will be connected to the, what happened especially after the schools, the UN schools that were hit by, by the Israelis seven times after UN uh, officials told Israelis more than once, actually 35 times, they told Israelis, the IDF, that they, that they have civilians inside of that school. This yeah. is what turn the public opinion against the action of Israel. Of course, Israel has the right to defend mm -hmm. itself against terrorist attacks. But when every time that they kill one Hamas leader or one Hamas militant, with him they are killing at least 10 civilians. So the public opinion is asking, what is the end game here? And after killing 2,000 yeah. civilians uh, or 2,000 people, is Israel re really more secure and safe? Uh, let's try to avoid the inflammatory comments about each other and the ad hominem attacks because what we're trying to get at is whether or not the U.S. impression, the, the general opinion in the U.S. has been fair towards Israel. And Ben, I hear what you're saying. You think that it has not been, particularly when celebrities like Javier Bardem and his wife Penelope Cruz issue open letters condemning Israel and saying that they have engaged in genocide but they don't mention Hamas. I think you're wrong about the media. I believe certainly that CNN has shown both sides, but there is an impression, Ben, and I understand why you feel this way, that certainly when it comes to celebrities, that they're giving Hamas a pass. Well, and this, I think, is sort of the point with regard to showing both sides. When you're showing two sides is equivalent, and your, your idea of balance is to show Israel's side and then Hamas's side and then claim that, that balance has been achieved. Well, that's the sort of media coverage that would have led to the West losing World War II. So but I'm then, not a big see, but fan then, of that but sort then of But you're the one who's actually equating Hamas and Palestinian civilians. Those are not equal. The hell Showing, I am. Uh, why would you do that? Hamas In is what a way? terror. Because you're saying that when the media shows civilians being killed, they're somehow propping up Hamas. That's not true. That is you not what I said. 
You're saying... I did not say that at all. Okay. I said you feel free to show civilians being killed. What I suggested is that you should provide all the context for those civilians being killed. And as far as uh, the other woman who, who's on with me, I'm, I'm not familiar with her name. You know, as, as far as her personal insults, I mean, I'm not going to get into the quality of the movies that are made based on her books. I think that we can all stay away from that. Uh, Rula. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, reality and real politics and, and, and stay away from really ideology and hate, I would say. Look, Israel negotiated with Hamas more than once. The last time, and the most striking one, was in 2011 when they released 1,000 Hamas prisoners for one Israeli soldier. Let the public opinion, especially the Palestinian public opinion, believe if you use violent, we violence, we negotiate with you. While the PA, the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, recognized Israel, renounced violence, and got nothing in exchange. And today the world is asking, what can we do about this issue and move it in a context where we talk about occupation and blockade but Rula, I mean, as but, solutions? But, but to your point, Rula, I mean, wouldn't it just help if Hamas decided to stop trying to wipe Israel off the face of the earth? I mean, that's the non-starter. Shouldn't, isn't Look, that, it's I impossible think to negotiate with them given that. Look, Israel negotiated with Hamas, but look, let's look at history. Americans and the British negotiated with IRA when they were considered an extremist terrorist group that would blow up schools, if we remember. And actually, they signed a peace deal with them, and they agreed on a peace deal, and they brought peace to Northern Ireland. So this is the way you negotiate with your enemies, mm -hmm. not with your friends. And finally, right. you can... Con Put that in context. Why we have cyclical violence? It's because of the occupation and because of the blockade. All right. Obviously, uh, you both have uh, very interesting and differing <laughs> perspectives. Uh, ben Shapiro, Rula Jabal, thank you for being here. We'll talk to you again. Thank you for having us. Thank you.